For the last month, I've been vibe coding. For those of you that don't know what that is, somehow, vibe coding is basically when you sit back, you might not have much programming experience, and you basically sit back and tell an AI model what to do. Add this feature, fix this bug, that type of stuff. I'm someone who started learning programming in 2022. That was kind of the real big boom for generative AI, but it actually wasn't that great at programming at the beginning. So I stuck to the usual route of YouTube videos, Stack Overflow, Reddit, all those. And it worked, it was very slow, probably still a good way to learn. As ChatGPT evolved and trained on more and more data, it got good really good. In fact, it went from helping you debug a missing semicolon or incorrect types to being able to write entire features, refactor entire code bases, and it was just able to explain why something broke better than most Stack Overflow or Reddit posts. I don't know about you, but I vividly remember on many occasions researching into a problem and I come across a post on Stack Overflow and there's always a user that says, I solved it. And then you just see their, their accounts deleted and it's like, man, now, whenever I have a problem, I just copy my code into ChatGPT and ask, why am I getting this error? And it would respond, I'd say with 80% accuracy. When it was right, it was usually spot on. I also made an actual effort not to copy and paste code back and forth. I feel like I'm not learning anything there. So I would sit there and look over and see what ChatGPT did that makes my code work. And also at this time, when I just started learning, I was only really doing front-end development. It's been a few years of this, completely self-taught development using AI as a companion instead of as an agent doing work for me. And I think that in today's world, it is a very efficient way to learn and debug. But I've made a lot of effort to avoid vibe coding, but I thought I would see how bad or good it was and give it a go. I was using VS Code, which has AI built in with Copilot. And you can also install a bunch of free AI extensions, uh, but I wanted to go all in. I downloaded Cursor, which I think is like one of the fastest growing companies of all time. Uh, and I bought a month of the pro plan, which gives you extended limits on agents, unlimited tab completions, and larger context windows. Basically, context window is the maximum size of text or tokens as referred to by the OpenAI API that you can give to an AI in a single conversation that it can actively use to generate new response. Once you go past that limit, older information is forgotten or summarized to start a new conversation. Right away when you're setting up cursor, it asks you if you want to set up cursor to look like a normal IDE or if you want agent mode, where it doesn't actually show you, you know, any open windows or a file explorer. And it's more of just a conversational UI with an AI agent that can make changes to your code base. You can, there are different modes you can have your AI conversation in. There's agent, debug, ask. When you're in ask mode, the AI can't actually make any changes to your code. In agent mode, the AI can make as much changes to your code base as needed to do whatever you request of it. There's also a debug mode, which I honestly did not use that. <laughs> Maybe I should have. Uh, and once I was set up, I kind of just went for it. So at this point, I had been working on a pagination. Pagination? I think it's pagination. I'm going to say it that way. If that's wrong, please don't make fun of me. Basically, when you're scrolling through your mail, when we're about to load the next page, I just want to check if that's available locally. If not, we'll go to Google or Outlook for the next page. So that's basically all it was. It was just kind of switching between remote and local whenever it needed. But to you, you wouldn't feel a difference. You can just scroll through your emails effortlessly. It was surprisingly tricky. I'd been working on it for a while and it just felt like when I fixed one bug, three more popped up. So I said to the AI in agent mode, can you finish my hybrid pagination system? And I just let it do its thing. The AI worked in my code base for one to two minutes while I sat back in my chair, drinking coffee, listening to music. It's safe to say at this point, I was in fact vibing. After it was done, I could see that it changed a few files. It had, like it had created multiple entirely new files, some of which were multiple hundred lines of code that I didn't write, as well as editing a lot of my core app functions. I was very cautious, uh, so I did start this in a new branch just so if anything went wrong, I could always go back. But it worked. First try, I just scrolled through my emails and it added some nice console logs for me so I could see if it was a local page or a remote. Scroll through and it worked perfectly fine. Although I don't think the amount of code that it wrote equates to that feature. I think they, it could have been done in less code. I was actually thinking, wow, this is kind of cool. It just finished a feature I had been working on at this point for weeks in minutes. So I asked it to do another feature and another. And another, I started asking it to refactor components. You know, I'd say things like, make this UI look more modern. 
At one point, I asked it to make the web version of my app. I'm using React Native, so there's a web portion. I asked it to make it work the same as mobile. For reference, I was using a lot of mobile-only libraries at this point, so the web version never worked. If I tried to load the web version, it would always come up with either a blank page or a bunch of errors. Uh, making the web version work 100% with the same functionality as mobile probably would have taken me months. And again, the AI did it in a few minutes. It rewrote, it created over 15 new files and components, but there it was. My app was now a website. Uh, it costed about 2.7 million tokens, which in monetary value is about one US dollar. So that entire conversation <laughs> costed about a dollar. At this point, I was already up to a few dollars in AI usage, but that was covered under the pro plan. I did not stop with the web version. I kept going, kept asking for more ridiculous features that would take me weeks to months to code myself, but it got to a point where I wasn't even coding anymore. My old programming, listening to music or a podcast sessions were replaced with me watching YouTube videos and waiting for the AI to finish so I could tell it what to do next and then go back to watching YouTube videos. The whole thing that I enjoyed, I didn't even look forward to anymore. I would sit and watch YouTube and then just wait for the AI. There was no problem solving. There was no moment where I learned something new. And you know, when you're working on a problem for a few days and you finally come up with an entirely new creative solution that's like never really been done before and you feel so proud of yourself not that that just doesn't happen i was vibing but at what cost i also noticed my app performance was much worse than it was before trying to ask ai to improve performance added thousands of lines of code complexity that i didn't understand i didn't write and it didn't even help if anything, it kind of made it worse. One of the pull requests that I pushed into staging was about 17,000 lines of code that I did not write. That is literally as much code as like some small project's entire code base. And even worse, when I tried to go back into coding and actually write my own code, I didn't even know where to start anymore. So many new files were created and new functions that I never wrote. So I didn't, I didn't mentally understand my code base anymore. My email card component, for example, went from about 100 lines of relatively simple code now at at over 1000 lines. So that's a 10 times increase. The only extra feature that's actually in the email card was being able to swipe left and right. So 10 times the size of the file for one extra feature. And that happened to a lot of components, which made going back very challenging. There were many functions and callbacks that I never wrote. I ended up getting frustrated and rolling back a lot of changes that AI made. At this point, I didn't care if the AI solution was fine and if it worked. I didn't write it myself, it was going. I wanted to go back to the point where I could just sit at my laptop and just add a new feature. I knew exactly what files to go into. I knew exactly what files I needed to create. I knew exactly how my code already worked. I realized the problem wasn't on AI. The problem was that I stopped being a developer. I wasn't developing anything. I was just supervising. I couldn't didn't make my app worse. Well, actually it kind of made the performance worse. It just made me disconnect connected from it entirely. For me, AI definitely works best when it's in the passenger seat and not in the driver's seat. I'll still ask it questions. I'll still use it to debug as I learn that way. After all, it is just a more efficient Google or Stack Overflow search. At the end of the day, I don't want to just own an app with my name on it. I want to understand it as I feel like that's just beneficial at the end of the day for the future. If you're actually interested in like becoming a developer, pipe coding is not the way to do it. It will get you the outputs of like you'll get some projects done or you'll be able to make a new game or something but you're not learning anything so yeah that's it you should subscribe because like 99.8 i think 99.4 percent of you are not subscribed last week it was 99.8 hell yeah we're almost at 200 subs you should subscribe because of a thousand subs i'm setting this as my profile picture it's a very bad picture i took of myself in 2020 it was covid time don't judge merry christmas if you celebrate that